Isaac, why do you care so much about people believing in the God of the Bible? After all, all religions are basically true. Wait, why do you say that? Who told you that? Well, some guy on TikTok. Are you serious? You know what I told you about scrolling TikTok at 1 a.m. at night. Are you kidding me, man? Okay, to the studio. All the major world religions are true. All religions work. Here's three reasons why. Okay, I'm really interested in what he's going to say here. They, he says that all world religions work. I'm interested in what he means by work. I guess he means that they all, you know, you all end up in an ideal or good place, a heaven or oneness or something like that. The interesting thing here we get to realize is that this statement is completely absurd because they teach different things. So what do we mean by all religions are true? How can things that are different be true equally. This is breaking the law of non-contradiction. doesn't make sense. So let's see what he has to say. Firstly, by the definition of most religions, God is an infinite being. That means an infinite being should be able to express itself in an infinite number of ways and be reached through an infinite number of ways. Okay, okay, so this is interesting. So if God is infinite, then he can express himself in an infinite number of ways. Well, this would be maybe correct if God did not already uh, reveal himself in a specific way. So through the scripture, through the Bible, God has said, hey, this is the way that I am expressing myself. This is what, you know, my character is. This is what my nature is. All that other stuff, that's not me. So if, you know, if you're worshiping that, that's not me. So just because God is infinite, we're, we're kind of mangling this, this definition of what it means to be infinite. Just because God's infinite doesn't mean that he is infinitely bad and infinitely good and infinitely uh, righteous and infinitely like terrible at the same time. It's like we're not understanding that God has a specific nature, that, that he is one way. He's not every way and he's revealed that through the Bible. Obviously, this guy doesn't recognize the Bible as God's word and we're going to get into more of that. So let's see his conclusion here. So what, what is our theological mistake here, buddy? So to limit an unlimited being to this or that religion is therefore a theological mistake. Interesting. So to limit uh, a being to this religion or that religion is a theological mistake. Well, they're teaching different things. Like this is the thing, right? Like they're teaching different things. If you look at um, Islam, right? What do they teach about God? Well, they don't teach the Trinity. So what we would understand is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They think that's heresy, right? So that's God's nature that we believe this is how he has revealed himself. Um, Islam says, no, that is not how he's revealed himself at all. And also this kind of, and we're going to get into this later, this kind of works righteousness mentality a lot of these religions hold on to that you need to do something or you need to take on some sort of practice in order to gain salvation or gain access to this good place when you die. Christianity operates from a whole different angle. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So let's hear a second kind of take on this. Second, if we are to judge a tree, we should judge it by its fruits. Now, all the major world religions have created innumerable saints and mystics and teachers who have inspired people, inspire people today, and continue to inspire people. These saints of all the major world religions are paragons of virtue and charity and service. Thirdly, this is a terrible argument. This is really bad. Like, I don't want to be mean to this guy. Like, I, he seems like a genuine guy, and I'd probably love to have a conversation with him if we had the opportunity. Um, but honestly, this is just not a good point. Maybe, you know, I love uh, arguments in threes too. So, some Sometimes you're making up, uh, oh, okay, these are three reasons why so-and-so, and you only have two, and then you're kind of like, well, what am I going to do about this? Maybe this is kind of a weaker one, but let me put this in the middle. This is not a good argument at all. Think about it. Just because somebody is nice or they do nice things or like they're a great person or at least, you know, quote unquote, great person. We know in the scriptures says no, no one is good. No, not one. No one seeks for God. No one does what is right. But on the outside, okay, may, they might be a nice person. But does that mean automatically that what they're teaching or what they're believing is true? Hey there. Hey, I wanted to share my faith with you. Doug, the donkey deity, he is the only true God. No, he's not. How could you say I'm wrong? I just mowed your lawn and bought Girl Scout cookies from your kid. Okay, well, three things. Number one, that's not my lawn and that's not my kid. And also Doug, the donkey deity. Seriously, you couldn't have been more creative. Look, guys, just because somebody's nice or they did a lot of good things, that doesn't mean that what they're teaching is true. This gets to our understanding of true. Is something true just because we believe it sincerely? Does that make it true? 
Well, no, actually, that's not at all what it means. <laughs> Multiple realities can't both be true if they are contradicting one another. That's just a logical fallacy. The practices of all the major religions are for the most part the same. Meditation, devotional prayer, contemplation of spiritual philosophy, and selfless service of other human beings. If the practices are the same, the destination is the same too, no? No, 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 absolutely not. Well, here, here's the thing. A lot of those practices, like I was talking about earlier, in a lot of these religions are motivated out of a desire to become either one with God or earn salvation or kind of get brownie points in order to please God so then you can earn the special place at the end of your life or whatever that might be. Well, Christianity operates out of a very different philosophy. This idea that we are all dead in our trespasses and sins, that we are incapable of doing good things, which is like no other religion has that, right? Because that's not a popular message. Nobody likes to tell you that you're a sinner and that you are actually deserving of God's wrath. Like that's scary. Come on now. But the great thing is, is that through Jesus' sacrifice, God sacrificing himself for the sake of his people to buy us back from this sin that we are enslaved to actually, um, that he made us free so that we could have forgiveness and new life in him and that we actually want to do these things out of love, that we want to pray, we want to read our Bible, we want to do these selfless, selfless acts of service because of the love that we've already received through Christ. So here's the thing, guys, this ultimately gets to where we find truth. What is truth? And a lot of people in this world are going to tell you what is true or that there are multiple truths or that the truth is relative. It's whatever you believe. But in the word of God, we are given God's revealed revelation to us. Yes, you can believe it. Yes, you can trust it. Uh, we look in the New Testament. Jesus fulfilled so many prophecies that were prophesied hundreds of years before they actually happened. Amazing. All these eyewitness accounts, all these scriptures over hundreds of years that were compilated, that were um, preserved over years and years and years. Claims that are verifiable, claims that we can actually test and understand that are true, that are backed up by archaeology. We can understand that this is true, but also without God's revealed revelation, we are subject to our own understanding of truth, our own subjective standard of truth, which is just meaningless. It's just changes with culture to culture to culture. But when we look at God, Jesus said that he is the truth, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through him. So if you want to know truth, you need to know Jesus. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, subscribe because I'm putting up new videos all the time. Also, give it a like because that helps get the video out to more people as well. If you want to support what I'm doing, head on over to Patreon, link in my bio. I'm trying to do this full time one day and uh, we're almost to the point where we have enough Patreon supporters uh, for me to be able to do that. So thank you so much for all of you who are on there and I uh, will see you next time. God bless.